Hey Floss Tube, welcome to Creative Whims Studio. Hey everybody, long time no see. Sorry I've been so absent. I will explain all of the things that have been going on with me lately and why I've been absent. But today is Floss Tube 187 and it is April 11th, 2024. This is a Floss Tube channel about my creative whims and mostly that entails needlework, but artwork as well when I can show it or have time to do it. <laughs> So the last time I did a floss tube video, it was before market. It's been like six weeks and I'm so sorry, but it's been an amazing six weeks. Well, except for the last week, I'll get to that. But uh, market was fantastic. I'm not gonna do a market recap because number one, it was so long ago and a lot of people have already recapped it. I can tell you for, our business it was our best show ever ever by far and we are so full of gratitude for you all who support my designs so much of march was taken up with just filling orders that we got at nashville like if we sold out of something or if someone just wanted their order shipped we had pre-orders but it was you know maybe people that weren't attending nashville so we had to ship it when we got home and then the reorders started coming in, you know, like a week after Nashville. And so that kept, <laughs> kept us very busy. What I learned for Nashville from now on is, well, I had 11 cross stitch releases. That was a lot. And, you know, the Hello Spring book was published by our publisher. And that's very helpful. Everything, I think everything else was hand stuffed right I only had one book no I had more books anyways yeah because that's serenity like the samplers and that those were books so the published things that's nice because <laughs> once it arrives here it's ready to ship everything else was hand stuffed the smaller um, designs so I am going to work with my publisher on doing something different with some of those designs uh, mostly just for Nashville because it's so hectic and, and busy and it's just too much to do all of that hand work, stuffing and, and, you know, printing and cutting and all of that. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking for a solution for that. But other than that, the show went smoothly. We had, we opened on Friday night for four hours and that was mandatory this year. I think it started last year that it was mandatory and, uh, we had a line out our door and it never let up for those four hours. I mean, four hours doesn't sound that long, but when you're racing back and forth, because we had all the pre-orders alphabetized in the back room, you know, so you're back and forth, back and forth. And you try to hurry because you know people are waiting in line, but that's when mistakes happen. So we just had to just kind of take a deep breath and, you know, the world's not going to end if you don't get your order on Friday. So we just had to kind of, calm ourselves down and, you know, just, you know, make sure we were thorough and did everything properly. And then we had what? After that we had, oh, and I was supposed to stay afterwards with Kristen. So Kevin went home on Tuesday. That's another thing we did this year, which was wonderful. So normally we go home on Monday. The show ends on Sunday. We would pack up Sunday night, go out to dinner, get up in the morning and go. We stayed Monday night and that way we could tear down and get everything loaded up on Monday. Tuesday morning, Kevin left. Tuesday morning, Kristen came and picked me up at the hotel and I went to her house. Well, Monday, since we had extra time, we went downtown. Um, oh my gosh, not Nashville. Franklin. And we did a little, a nice little lunch and we just went antiquing and, and spent that 
beautiful, it was beautiful weather. It was a beautiful day and all the trees were blooming and flowers were blooming. And I was just in my glory. I'm like, this is so awesome. Cause you know, back here in Michigan, it's snowing still and nasty. So I was really loving that. Well, the next day I had this itchy throat. I'm like, oh my gosh, my allergies from everything blooming. This is not good. But, you know, I thought it was allergies. And the only thing that was different about it not being allergies is I was completely exhausted. Tuesday night, I slept 10 hours. And Wednesday, I took a two-hour nap. I never sleep like that, ever. And so Tuesday, was it Tuesday night? No, Wednesday night, I happened to be on Facebook in the group for the Nashville needlework market and several people said that they came home with COVID and I'm like, Oh, I hugged that person. I hugged that person and I hugged that person. So I took the test and sure enough, anyways. Um, so there you go. I had to cut my trip short to Kristen. So I'm hoping to go back there maybe in June because we only had a couple of days together. And like I said, I slept a lot. So that was such a bummer such a bummer because we had major plans um and then we had easter i love easter week easter week is amazing we had decent weather for easter we did go outside for an easter egg hunt with the grandkids it was a little bit chilly but it was you know at least sunny and warm enough to not be out there with like winter boots and all that so easter was amazing and then the week after easter I had to call in for jury duty and I got put on a case and it was a very disturbing case and that's what I've been doing for the past since last Wednesday until yesterday we reached a verdict yesterday and I am a free woman again so for the past what was that a week basically I uh, was in jury duty it was interesting. The process, the process is interesting. I think I've never been on a case before. So, um, I learned a lot and I'm just glad it's over. <laughs> Let's just say that the other thing that's been keeping me away from doing a floss tube is I've been working on cleaning and organizing my studio. I have like these three cubicles, you could say, when I used to license full time, I had employees in all of these sections. I had a ghost painter, I had an assistant, and then I had a graphic designer at one point. And then when that ended, Kevin had one of the spots for his real estate business. Anyways, needless to say, there was like 20 years of paperwork and stuff just piled up. And I worked like three or four Saturdays in a row about five hours at a time and cleaned out two of the areas. And then the other area will have to wait because we're leaving for Aruba on Saturday. So excited about that. And I'm home. I get home and I'm home two days and then I go on a girl's stitchy weekend. And then I uh, will be home two weeks and then I go to Florida <laughs> to see us to key. So it's going to be a whirlwind. Um, what have I been working on? I've been designing for retreats that are coming up this year. I've been, des been designing for Patreon. I am designing for new releases and I'll talk about what's coming down the pike here pretty soon. And I'm designing a new fabric line. So all of that's been going on behind the scenes as well, which has kept me extremely busy. So uh, I, I get a lot of questions about what retreats are you doing this year? So I'm going to go through those right now. I don't have the dates of everything written down. Uh, that will be in the drop down menu, the drop down menu, the description box below. I'm a little out of practice, y'all. So um, let's just run through them. Now I am going to some retreats where I'm just an attendee and I will mention that too, but maybe I'll see you there. So Let's get started on that. July, I'm going to the Silver Needle Retreat in Tulsa, Oklahoma as an attendee. I'm going with, I think, three of us, three other people. And that's going to be a blast. Then we get home and three days later, I'm going to the Craft Gallery Retreat as an attendee. That's super exciting. Now, as far as I know, both of, I think all of these retreats, no. 
I think most of them are full. Um, not sure about Silver Needle. I think there is a waiting list. I know Craft Gallery is full, but again, you can always get on a waiting list. Then, so that's July. August, I am teaching Punch Needle at Sauter Village for Sauter Village Rug Hooking Week. And I'm also a vendor, so I will have my punched rugs there. I will have punch needle. I'll have, well, I'm working on new wool applique designs and I need to get those out to get model stitched. Yeah, so that is in August. And then September, the um, Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit in Portland, Oregon. I am a designer for that along with Beth Twist. We have collaborated on a couple designs which is my first collaboration. So I'm really excited about that. I love Beth. She's so fun to work with. Then in October is Primitive Gatherings in Larson, Wisconsin. Now that one, I don't think they've even announced it yet. So keep your ears peeled for that. I know is it every Thursday, today is Thursday. So I think today, uh, Lisa Bonjean goes live every Thursday and they talk about things that are upcoming. So that is how you would find out about it. You could also call. I don't know if they're accepting, you know, uh, you know, filling spots right now or not. But so that's going on in October. November is the attic in Mesa, Arizona, again with Beth Twist and uh, Linda Lautenschlager from Chessie and Me. So the three of us will be there in, in November. And then... I'm going back to the Jingle Ball in December. So I have August, September, October, November, and December filled with retreats and shows or some kind of obligation. So yeah, I have my work cut out for me this year for everything. Now next year I have um, two retreats I'm doing, one in the spring, one in the fall. That's it. I'm not doing any more that year and then the next year i have the fall a fall retreat and i'm i'm weaning myself away from doing so many commitments and retreats and things okay so hopefully i will see you at one of those i mean at the very least the jingle ball right because you don't have to go anywhere for that so i'm excited to be invited back to that okay i'm gonna go over my whips the first whip is the hometown sale that I'm doing in my Patreon for tier four. And I don't have a cover sheet. I do not have a cover sheet to show how far we are on it. So the 15th, when is the 15th? Sunday or Monday? Anyways, before I leave for Aruba on Saturday, I will have a scheduled post for you all in Patreon for your um, next page. So last time I showed you, I was working on, what was I working on? Okay, I had this building done, but I didn't have Tinsmith on there. And I didn't have that blue building next to it. I believe that says quilts. That's gonna say quilts on it. And you can see I have a start of a couple other buildings and the little sheepies. So this is how far we are right now. And this building that you see here, nope, backwards. <laughs> this building you see here is the last building. So it's not gonna go any further than this. There is a sign that will hang off this building, but I was a little worried I was gonna run out of space, but I think I centered it pretty, pretty good there. So that is the mystery sale for my Patreon tier four members. This is a two-year sale. Oh, yeah. What am I stitching this on, y'all? Come on, my Patreon. So I, just so you guys know, um, if you're watching this replay here on my Flosstube channel, I'm actually recording this live, and I'm recording it in my Patreon group. It's kind of a little perk for them, and I thought it would be something fun because I haven't done it live with them in a couple weeks. So um, what are we stitching this on? <laughs> I know it's Fox and Rabbit. Wait, baked clay? I think it's, I don't know. If you guys remember what I'm stitching it on, let me know and then I can let them know. But of course, 40 count, my favorite. So that is what I'm working on 
one of the things I'm working on, I have not stitched. I've not had a lot of time to stitch. And I haven't stitched on this in quite, oh, up in the attic. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> yes, up in the attic. Oh, yes. Laura reminded me. Yes, I will be at the Farm Girl Gatherings in the fall. So uh, I'm going to Farm Girl Gatherings as an attendee. Teresa Vanette is the designer. Yay. And I'm actually leaving from Iowa and driving up to Larson, Wisconsin for the Primitive Gatherings retreat because like, I'll have like three days in between those two. It doesn't make sense to drive all the way home. So I think it's like only five hours to get from where I'm going to be at Farm Girl Gatherings, Amana, Iowa, up to Larson, Wisconsin. So that'll be nice. All right. The other thing I started is another Patreon. I just love this design and I'm just aching for spring, y'all. I mean, it's, we've had a couple of really nice days. Monday, it was in the seventies. Yesterday, it was like 68. Today's chilly and rainy, but um, I'm ready for that warm weather, which I will find in Aruba. So this is the design. This was, um, March's design. It's only 120 by 120, so it's a fairly small little sampler. That was um, tier three and four last month. And this is how far I got. Look how tiny it is. It's so cute. So I, I, flubbed up somewhere along this. I was way over here and it didn't, it didn't line up, didn't match up. And I counted all the way back and my mis mistake was back here. So I'd rip it all out and redo it. And thank God the second time around it matched up. What am I stitching on? Gee, I wonder if I wrote that down. Probably not. <laughs> I'm bad at that. I just like grab my stuff and sit down and start stitching. And I just... I started it. I did right when I started it. March 22nd, I started it. Oh, that's such a bummer that I didn't write it down. Sorry, guys. Am I ever going to get better at that? So that's my second whip that I worked on. I have other whips. That heart and hand one, I really want to work on that. Like, I want to work on all these, but time is... An issue for me and I won't I know I won't stitch in Aruba because there's a lot of things to do in Aruba and you know I'm gonna be to be honest if I do any work I'll be designing for patreon because when I get back I'm home two days and I go on a girl stitching trip for I think it's four or five days and there I'm going to stitch so I will be designing for patreon while I'm gone I'm in, on my vacation in Aruba. Okay. I designed a freebie in case you haven't seen it. Oh, how he loves us. I think I just called it. He hey, is this showing backwards for you guys? Well, I guess I can look on my, I don't think so. And this is available on my website. I will have a link below for it. I had this sketched out. And I actually started charting it. I don't remember. I think I wrote it in here. I started charting it, I think, two years ago. And it got to be too close to Easter, so I quit. So it said, I, I started this chart two years ago, but it was going to be too late for Easter, so I stopped working on it. Then I forgot about it until this year. It's kind of late, but it's a small and can be stitched for Easter. Yeah, I released it, or, or not released it, but I... Uh, Posted it like the on Palm Sunday, I believe. Yeah, Palm Sunday I posted it. So basically you had a week to get it done. So let me show you my progress. And oh my Atlanta. I'm stitching this on 40. No, this that's right. Did I write this down? This is 46 count. I don't think I wrote this down either. Oh, that's such a bummer. I'm pretty sure it's Fox and Rabbit, though. I want to say it's up in the attic, 46 count. 
So I have a little, I have a couple errors, but um, I'm going with it. On this particular design, it's not, um, it's not going to affect like the rest of the design. So it's so cute. I already have the piece picked out that I'm going to finish it on a little Chantel circular piece. And that's why I wanted to do 46 count because I wanted it to be small enough for that piece. So I don't have a lot more to do on this. So I will have it fully finished. And you know, this is not something that has to be out just for Easter. I mean, it is purple, which I don't have a speck of purple in my house. So it won't really match, but I love what it says and I love the message. So, All right, and that's in my, this is in my really fancy project bag. Why I didn't put it in one? Because I have a gazillion of them, I don't know. Okay, those are my current whips that I've worked on since I saw you guys last time. All right, finishes and FFOs. So in the spring punch needle primitive stitcher magazine, I put a punch needle in there. I wanted to do a simple design so that someone could knock it out quick. I mean, punch needle is fast anyways, but it's kind of nice to get one done. Like this, you could get done in a day, seriously. So that is it. I will show you the piece. I just received my my magazine last week, so um, I'm usually one of the last. So by now, if you have your subscription, you should have yours already. So here's the piece. A little close up. This is a Chantel board, and I just put a ribbon through those holes and I painted it black and then I painted this gray color over top and then I just took I think it was just a fork or I think it was a fork and I just went no that couldn't be because the lines would be closer together I really don't know what I used but I just made wavy lines in it and then um, sanded it you can see it's kind of roughed up sanded it and then put my punch needle on there. I think it's super cute. Nice and prim. I do have something coming up that's pretty exciting. I just want to mention it here. I'm not going to show the piece and give you too many details, but I have an exclusive that I've designed for Claire Stitching Post. And it's really cute. It's fully finished. Um, I photographed it yesterday. We're moving quickly on it. She is ordering the floss and the linen in order to make kits for you all. So when that is, when she gets her stuff in and she feels she's ready to ship, then she'll let me know. And then I'll do just a quick video on floss tube, just showing that and all the details and how to order it and stuff. So wait, that's coming up um, probably in the next couple weeks. Okay, I wanna show some FFOs that were, <laughs> that were sent, sent in to me. Now, normally when I do this part, I can post the picture right here you know like i insert the picture for you but being that this is a live video i can't really do that so i'm going to show them to you on my laptop so let me just move some things around real quick so i have room for everything space is at a premium right now i just don't have room on this table okay Bear with me. <laughs> don't leave me. Baby, don't leave me. Okay. Lois, let's see. Lois. All right, so I'm going to first read about the piece if they have anything on here, and then I will show it to you. So first we have a From the Heart Angel 
from Lois. She said, let's see. Hi, Teresa. My sister Penny recently finished your cross stitch chart, a work of heart in command for a memory of her husband who passed away in March, 2022. She stitched the piece on 14 count Ada in the color Enchanted by Mystic Fabrics. She used DMC threads, two threads over one square. It was framed by Hobby Lobby and I think it turned out so beautiful. Thank you, Teresa, for creating such beautiful things. This is from Loa, Loa, <laughs> Lois Bozarth. And sorry for your loss, for your, Penny's loss, I can't even imagine. So here is in command. And yes, it turned out really pretty. I love it on the light blue. Very nice. You guys see that okay? Okay. Next we have Sheila Wilson. Whoa, hold on. Okay, she said, hi, Teresa. I got my framed egg collector finished back today and I'm extremely happy with the way it looks. Thank you for your help as I was struggling with parts of the pattern. I believe this is fiber on a whim, cream and sugar, and I sprayed with antiquing spray over and over and pretty hard. I doubt that I just put this out for spring. I think I will leave it out all the time. Happy Stitcher, Sheila. So nice. I love this one. Yeah, they did a nice job framing that, didn't they? Hold on, I can get closer. I got something on my tripod. I just need to move. Maybe. I forgot how to take this thing off. All right here. There we go. I bought this thing. To, you put it around your neck. <laughs> and it's there's a magnet here and then the other part is on my phone. Because have you ever like been in the middle of doing something and your phone rings and you want to talk to the person, but you want to keep working on what you're working on? Like, obviously you want to concentrate on what they're saying, but like if you're putting stuff away anyways, so this way I can talk and be hands-free. Yeah, it's really attractive. All right. I think this will work better. Love that piece. So thank you for sending that to me to share. All right, let's do this. Next we have Debbie. Hi, Teresa. I use sticky board and a piece of very thin quilt batting under the stitching. I then used a glue gun to adhere it to the top of the train case. I also used a mini pom-pom trim and some, uh-oh, it cut that off. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, I think it was because I was asking her how she adhered that to the train case. So I don't really have any other information there, <clears throat> excuse me, but she ma basically made this train case, a little Oort container, a stitchy mat, and a project bag. Look at how cool all that looks coordinated. So she stitched, what is that? Stitchy bird number one. I've done two of them now. And then she used the uh, stitchy bird fabric to make all the accessory pieces. Very cool. I love it. You guys seeing this okay? All right. Dennis says yes. Oh, that was Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. All right, next we have Doreen from Privies and Prim. She said, here's my finish. I prefer small designs, so this one was going to be a challenge for me. I was ready to quit and pass it on when I realized that I could finish it with what I had already stitched. My first thought was 
to finish it as a stand up, but then I decided to put it on a basket. I got the basket for $1 at a thrift store and it was already painted with the textured finish on it. The design I stitched one over two on 36 count mystery linen and I stained with walnut crystals. I used Weeks Dye Works, Jaybird for the dress and Kudzu for the grass. Everything else was DMC. The Rick Rack is from Purple Paper Mountain on Etsy and it's called Rustic Burgundy. The flowers are from Michaels. Doreen, that is very detailed and I love it. You gave us all the goods on this. Now look, you guys, how cute. So this is Egg Collector. So she just stitched the bunny and the tree with the little bird on top and attached it to a basket with some pretty flowers inside. Isn't that nice? There's another picture. Let me see if I can get the other picture. Oh, there's a close up of just the stitching. So way to think outside the box, Doreen. I love that. That is awesome. All right, next we have Dawn Becker Ellison. She stitched wool and honey farm. She said, hi, Teresa. I finished the first pattern I bought of yours, wool and honey farm. I left off the border to not interfere with the sign frame that I found at Hobby Lobby with the unfinished wood. I laced my picture on foam board and popped it in. I think they make a great pairing just like sheep and bee skips. Very cute. Very cute finish. I like that piece too that she got at Hobby Lobby. Very cute. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sending that in. Oh, Doreen said it's one of my favorite finishes. Well, you did a beautiful job. Let's see where we at. Wait, what was ha what is happening? <laughs> All right, are we on Beth? Yes. Okay. Next we have Beth Maxi. I just recently finished Stitchy Bird after one of my Stitchy friends finished it on her train case. You featured her recently on your floss tube. Her name is Deb. Okay, so I must have already showed that other train case. My bad. I took, you know what? I printed off so many and I'm like, no, I think I showed that. So normally after I show them, I delete them out of my file and I didn't the last couple times evidently. Anyway, she said, I took the pattern and put it on a jewelry box that carries my stitchy trinkets in. I absolutely love it. My friend Josie gave me the needle book made out of the Stitchy Bird fabric line. Thanks for all you do. I love being level four Patreon. And once I get my up in the attic fabric, I will be starting to sell. Cool. Thank you, Beth. Mm -hmm. So here is her. Look at how cute. It fits perfectly on the top of her jewelry box. Let me click this. Ah, oh, look at the inside. Look at that. Wow. Amazing. Trying to hold it as still as I can. <laughs> look at all the cool things she has in there. Oh, that needlebook is really cute. So nice. All right, that was the bath. All right, so we have, next we have Kim. This is from Kim Ladd. She said, I want to share my FFO of Black and Jack. I wanted a simple and, why didn't, I wanted it simple and prim, so I went with no embellishments. I just used Helen D's finishing suggestion to add clippings of yarn to the corners prior to adding the polyfill to give them more structure. I think it turned out darling. Thank you for a perfect design. Well, thank you, Kim. Oh, I love this one. This is a little one. This is one of my, I call them teeny. They're, that's the name of the line, I guess you could say. Um, and they're just small little tiny patterns. And they're def they're like $2 cheaper than our 
regular six by nine charts, but super cute. Good morning, Daisy. Oh my gosh, Neely's Needle Nest. Melissa, she said, I will be in Aruba on April 23rd. 10 days after we'll be there, right? Wait. Oh no, we're going to be the, really the 20th. You're going to be there right after us. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Okay, I've never been anywhere outside the U.S. unless it was Canada. So this is like a big deal for me. I was a little apprehensive at first, to be honest, and... and Okay, let's just say paranoid, but <laughs> I've calmed my fears and it's going to be fine. Okay, next we have Yvette. Right here. Hi, Teresa. I know you will get more than one of this, but you are more than welcome to use it if you would like. I haven't fully finished it, but can if you want, but can if you want, or you can do whatever you please. I used, oh, I know. So this is, she was sending this to me to as a possibility to use in the Hello Spring book. That's what this is. She used the called for threads on 36 count XJU designs, uh, rustic drab linen. Okay. I like that. I like that linen color. Rustic drab linen. So that is a design that is in the Hello Spring book, which was released in Nashville in March. Very cool. Thank you, Yvette, for sending that in. By the time I had her email, I'd already had somebody, I had already chose somebody to be in the book. So I apologize for that. Let's see. Now we have Carol. This is kind of long, bear with me. Hello, Teresa, I wanted to share a photo of my finish of the Remember Me sampler you released last year at market. As soon as I saw it, I knew I had to stitch it. You see, I live in a yellow brick house, not as big or fancy as the one is this one, LOL, <laughs> surrounded by tons of flowers. I stitched this on 32 count linen I painted with diluted writ dyes, lemon yellow and tangerine. I used DMC flosses and made a made it a bit peachier and in some spots substituted green for brown. My initials grace the basket. I also personalize other, wait, other my stitching. I, I also personalized, oh, others maybe by stitching the C and the N in a different color for my son's names. The frame is such a great finish for the sampler. It picks up the greens and has flecks of peach in it. Thank you for such a beautiful sampler. I'm looking forward to your market releases as I know there will be much temptation there for me. <laughs> That's awesome. So this is from Carol Funicelli or Funicelli. Oh my gosh, how pretty. Let me take a look first. I love it. Oh, I do. Okay, so I really like this added. So let me show you what she has done differently. If I can do this without dropping this. Um, so these flowers, I believe, had more of a yellow. And she changed those to like a brown, like a gray brown, it looks like to me. But her fabric is gorgeous with that pink going through it. Um, again, she said she put her initials on the basket. And then somewhere are initials of her sons. I'm not seeing that, though. Wow, it's like detective work. There's so much going on in there. Oh, no, no, no. I see now. She changed the color. So in the alphabet, she changed the color of her son's initials. That's what she did. Isn't it pretty? She's brave. I mean, that's so cool to like take a piece of linen and just paint it with some writ dye. And wow, she did a fabulous job. I like her changes. Very pretty. So thanks for sharing that with us, Carol. All right, let's go back. Now we're on Laura. Oh, Laura Schroet, she has a bunch for us. Um, now she did not, she did not mention 
what she stitched everything on. So the first one is Stitchy Bird 1 and 2. She has them both finished and then she framed them in the same frame or are they the same? Yep. In the same frame. Super cute. I met Laura at Farm Girl Gatherings last year and I love her. She has so much energy. She's super fun, super friendly. Enjoyed that immensely. She's the one that reminded me, hey, aren't you going to Farm Girl this fall? I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that one. <laughs> All right, next we have Needleworker's Oath. And I don't think, again, she put anything about what she stitched it on or anything. But she finished it like on Chantel's board. And then she stitched that little piece, that little hoop in the center. Super cute finish that way. I love that. And then her third one, I said, oh my gosh, you've been stitching like crazy. She said, I'm stitching like it's my job. <laughs> I love that. All right. This one, she did say she stitched on 18 count latte. This is, whoops, I got to I didn't even bring the image up yet. This is Stitcher Strawberries. And that was, that is in the spring book as well. Hello, spring. But that piece, she finished it on. I am in love with that finish. That is so cool. Chippy paint is one of my favorite things. Unless it's on my car. <laughs> or my house. Or my shutters. But you know what I mean. Super cute. So good job, Laura. You've been stitching like it's your job for sure. You're stitching more than I am. And it is my job. <laughs> Let's see. Last one. This last one is from Sandy Thomas. Hi, Teresa. I finished this every flower for pa Patreon piece and it is another winner. It is stitched on 36 count XU de Designs hazelnut with the called four flosses. Mm -hmm. It is the perfect companion piece to wisdom. I chose identical frames and fillet scents they are companion pieces. Thank you for sharing your incredible talent. Well, thank you, Sandy. All right. Oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. So this was Patreon. I don't remember what month. I don't think she, but it's, she didn't mention what month it was from, but this is a Patreon design available in the secret shop. If you are tier two, three, and four in Patreon, it's called Every Flower. The frame is perfect for it, isn't it? And then she shows it. There's another picture showing it with wisdom. And she's right. It looks so good together. Very nice. So pretty. Oh, I love it. So thank you so much, ladies, for sending in your pieces for me to share here on my Floss Tube video. I appreciate it. It's really fun to see when people make changes, see how they finish things. And I know I enjoy it. That's why I share it with you all. And it might inspire you to do something similar, you know. Um, so, yeah, if you want to uh, if you want to send in one of your finished Teresa Kogut pieces, just email me at Teresa Kogut 3 just the number three at gmail.com. I will have that in the description box below too. So you can find that if you want to reach out. When you do send the picture though, um, if you can, uh, let me know what you stitched it on. If you use a called for flosses, you know, give me as much detail as you can so that I can share that with my audience. Um, but you know, if you're like me, you might not know what you stitched it on. <laughs> so... I'm not going to hold your feet to the fire on that one, that's for sure. Okay, let's see. I think. Okay, I want to talk uh, just real quick about some upcoming releases, and then I'm going to go into Stitchy Kindness and Haul. And then at the end, we can just chit chat, okay? I'm going to ask me questions. All right, so upcoming releases. Like I mentioned, I 
have an exclusive for Claire Stitching Post. And she her shop is in Ohio. It's a brick and mortar shop. And I can't remember what town. My bad. All the details will come in the next week or so. Um, the piece I can tell you is was stitched on a fox and a rabbit linen. And so she is placing an order with them. And, you know, so as soon as all of that is done and she has everything in stock, I'll be announcing that to you all. I will have a May release. So last year in the spring, I had a retreat, an Annabella's retreat in Lansing, Michigan. And then in, that was in April. Did I say May? I don't know. Last April, I had an Annabella's retreat in Lansing, Michigan. So those designs are ready to now be released to the public. And then in May, I had a retreat at the Craft Gallery in Finley, Ohio. Those designs are also ready to be released. So in May, there'll be, there's three for Annabella's and there are two designs from Craft Gallery. All those will be available to the public in May. Then in June, I will have a patriotic book. I'm not sure exactly what the title will be. It's going to be one of my hello books. So hello USA, hello America. I don't know yet exactly what I'm going to title it, but that will have right now I have one, two, three, four, five, five designs. Is it just five? I think five designs for it. I'd like to have a couple more, but we, it just depends on if I can get stuff done, <laughs> you know, all these vacations. And then I probably won't have another release until the fall because I got a vacation in, in coming up this week and then a girl's trip. And then I have, you know, another vacation in Florida in May. And then June, I might be going back to Kristen's July. I'm going to two retreats and then from there on until the rest of the year, I'm, you know, a guest designer and I have, you know, retreats. So I just won't have time. So yeah, it'll be a fall retreat and then there'll be no new releases until the Jingle Ball. And those will be obviously just for the Jingle Ball. But anyways, that's the plan. While I'm thinking about it though, the new releases that we released at Nashville, I have not put in the Etsy shop. And I'm mentioning this because this is a Patreon live. And if you are one of my whimsies and you're a Patreon member, that's what I call you, my whimsy. And you get a discount code or a coupon code, I should say, every month to shop in my Etsy shop. So everybody's been waiting for me to put the new releases in the Etsy shop. So let me just tell you, I'm going to do that either later today or tomorrow. If I have the energy after the grandkids leave today, I will do it today. Otherwise, I will do it tomorrow. Also, Needleworkers Oath was my Nashville exclusive, which meant that for six weeks, approximately six weeks, only the shops that attended Nashville got to sell that pattern. Well, that is going to change as of tomorrow. All shops will have an opportunity to purchase and carry that in their store. And then I will also have that in our Etsy shop. So all of that is coming up as well tomorrow. All right. I want to share a little bit of stitchy kindness with you. Now I, I have a ton of haul. I'm not going through all my haul for the last six weeks. Plus, you know, market haul and it's way too much. Um, and hopefully I don't miss any stitchy kindness. If you gifted me something and I didn't show it, then I am so sorry. Oh, geez. Let's see. What do we have first? Okay. First we have from Patty Wyan. I wonder if she's on this live. Um, she wrote me a really nice letter, but she made me, she found some of my old fabric. So the hometown mystery sale that we're doing currently in my Patreon for tier four, it actually 
was a fabric line many moons ago. I mean, we're talking, I could easily say between 15 and 20 years ago. It's definitely between 15 and 20 years ago. Anyways, it was a fabric line called Williamsburg. And that is where the mystery style came from. It was from the artwork from the from this fabric line, Williamsburg. So she found some of this fabric and she made me this super cute bag, project bag to put my hometown sale in. Now it's not in there currently because I wanted to share this with you guys before I filled it up with everything. But look how cute, there's a little sheepy on it. A little toss tassel and I love it. Now this was, this is in a square like this because I used to design pillow panels for all my fabric lines when I was designing with South Sea Imports. Then here is like a little mini stripe that I had done for the fabric line. She put on the back. It's so cute. And then a thread bed. Here is the fabric. Williamsburg welcome. But wait until you see the little needle, the thing you put your needles in. <gasps> it's a sheep. Ah, I love it. <laughs> it's so dang cute. I love that. I love these thread beds. They are very helpful. And then she even made this amazing pouch. So cute. So in the fabric line, I took like the signs that were on the, all the buildings and I just made like an all over pattern with it. So cute. And then there's a, oh, that's cute. A little charm that's a house and a tree. Very cute. I love it. Oh, and there's even more <laughs> of the same fabric inside. So cute. Patty, I love it. Thank you so much. It's very kind. So now I'm going to make the transfer. Not right now, but now that I've talked about it, I can make that transfer. Again, running out of room on this table. Maybe I'll put this over here. Don't you love that sound? Love it. While I was at market, Jeanette, Jeanette spoiled me to death. Bella Rose Needleworks. Jeanette. I will have her shop, Etsy shop, linked below. She made me one with stitchy bird fabric many moons ago shortly after the line came out and i love it these bags are fantastic but she made me one out of halloween whimsy oh does she have a card in here yes no <laughs> hold on yes right there i had two cards in there all right, I'm going to hold this up so that you can screenshot it if you wish to check her out. Well, hopefully you can see it. I will link her below, but just in case I forget, I, I want to give her kudos. Uh, look at this little, oh my gosh, she fussy cut that little zipper pull. So cute. Zipper here, a pocket here, and then let's open it up. I love things that close with a zipper so all your stuff doesn't fall out when it tips over. Like yesterday when I was in court and you know you're supposed to be quiet and no expression, you know, <laughs> I should say when you're in jury duty. And the bag I had why I didn't use one of these? It's got the nice flat bottom. I don't know. Anyways, I haven't used these. Well, first of all, it's Halloween and I'm not going to use it right now, but I'm rambling. Um, my bag fell over and knocked my water bottle over and it went clang, clang, clang. And I was like, oh, I about died. The girl next to me, her phone went off. And they tell us every time, please silence or turn your phone. I always turn my phone off because I'm just paranoid. Even if I have the volume down, I'm like, what if it goes off? So I do that. I don't even take my phone into church, but I had to take it into the 
the jury box because you can't leave anything behind in the room. Anyways, and she was freaking out. She's like, what the? And she's like saying stuff out loud. She's like, what the heck? Oh my gosh. And, you know, and she's trying to get it out of her purse and shut it off. Well, what happened? She had her volume all the way down, but her emergency contact, she said it was her mother. So she thinks because her mom called and then called back and she's one of her emergency contacts. That's why the call went through. I'm like, I didn't know that could happen. So yeah, turn your phone off if you're going to be somewhere that you don't want it to go off. So anyway, the inside look, you guys, look at pockets, three pockets on the inside. It's fabulous. And then this, wait, where is it? Oh, my bad. I was thinking that there was a thing hanging down for your keys. It was this I was hearing. Look at how cool it is, though. So she gifted me this. And then she reaches in her bag and pulls out another one. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And so I'm like, I'm going to pick between, you know, I'm going to pick one of them. She goes, no, they're both yours. I'm like, well, can I pay you at least for one? No. She goes, I love doing this for you. And I mean, she's just the sweetest. And Jeanette, if you're watching this, I have not forgot about sending you some stuff. I know you know what I'm talking about, but my life has been a crazy zoo. So it it's still, it's still coming. So this is made out of my Kringle line. Her kindness and generosity just blows my mind. So look how beautiful. Same thing, fussy cut. What'd she put on this one? Oh my gosh, she fussy cut. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta make sure you can see that. A little snowman face for that zipper pull. Oh my gosh, how cute. Again, a nice big pocket here, a zip pocket here. And again, pockets inside. Ah, oh, look how pretty inside. So Jeanette, I mean, amazing talent and so, so kind. Thank you so much. So now I have Stitchy Bird for every day. I have a Christmas one and I have a Halloween one. So set. Okay. I got to put that back in there. Okay. I want to put her card back in there. Other Stitchy Kindness. So this is from Pretty Paws Stitches. Her name is, is it Desiree. I think it's Desiree. She just signed it Desi from New Jersey. Super kind. She said, um, I've been enjoying your floss tube videos for about a year now. You have also become my favorite designer. I am currently working on Pet All the Dogs and just purchased Dwelling Place, of which I just completed the small pillow. I thought it would be nice to send you some small gift a small gift package of my handmade cross stitch accessories i hope you enjoy them lots of love desi from new jersey thank you desiree this is fabulous so let me show you all of her information on here um this is says find me on etsy and youtube at pretty paws stitches but i'll show this up close hopefully it will come in clear but I will link it below. So here, I'm going to take them all out. I don't know. This might take too long to take everything out. But look at that. How cute is that? It's coffee. Oh, I got something to tell you about coffee later, too. <laughs> Hopefully I don't forget. <sighs> so many things because it's been so long. I don't think I'm going to take them all out. It's going to take too long. Look at this needle minder coffee again very nice here are some floss drops with a ring a ring and a and a like floss bling i want to take one of the cards out so you can see it are they all the same no they're all different all about coffee those are cool aren't they doesn't it make you want a, a cup of joe? So they're all coffee. And then it has this. Um, floss bling. And ring to go with those. 
nice products. These are really nice and thick, just so you know. All right. And then this one is a donut. So all the all of the floss drops will be donut related. And then look how cute. So there's a donut. And then I already showed those. So there you go. I'm sure she has more products, but she, that's what she gave me. Super, super sweet of her to do that. Oh, I forgot to mention. Okay, guys, here's the best part. 30% off promo code if you use my name, just Teresa, T-E-R-E-S-A. She said, for your floss tube watchers, 30% off. That's a lot. That is huge. So go check her out. Put in the coupon code T-E-R-E-S-A and get 30% off your order. Fantastic. Okay, more stitchy kindness. Um, I got to see Karen and Bren, Fox and Rabbit. I just wish we had more time together with everyone. <laughs> oh, that's the hardest part about market is not getting to spend time with all your friends. So they gifted me Dust Bunny is the more gray color, and then Inca is more of a yellowish color. So I'm going to hold them this way so you can see them better. Aren't they beautiful? I love stitching on their fabric. So they gifted me their two new colors. Thank you so much. Come back in the bag. Okay, next is Paul. So I was watching, or I was watching, I was on Facebook and I saw this post from Sheila Norwood. And doggone it. I wonder if I can find the picture to show you. Well, I'm not going to mess with that. I saw this picture of One Nation. Let me take this out of the bag. This is an older pattern. I don't know when this came out. Does it say? Oh, copyright 2010. Ooh, that's a long time ago. So 14 years ago, this came out. One Nation. You've probably seen it. I saw this the first time at Silver Needle in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They had it framed in, I think it was behind the counter or something. And that was the first time I saw it stitched. I love it. But I loved Sheila Norwood's fabric so much. And she stitched hers on 32 count old and crusty. It's Laura's, Laura's fabric is the name of the company that she got her fabric from. I ordered it and I haven't received it yet. I'm going to have to check on that. So anyway, once I saw it, I went to 123 Stitch, bought the pattern so that I could get all the floss colors and everything. I do have a message into her right now to ask her if she used the called for because when I got the, the fit, when I got the floss, to me they looked a lot brighter than what was in her photo. So she, I'm waiting to hear back from her, but that will take me probably 10 years to stitch because it's fairly big. I will stitch. I think I'm going to stitch it on definitely 40 count. I thought about going higher, but you know, I'm stitching that. Mm -hmm. He loves us. That whip I showed you, I'm stitching that on 46 count. And I can tell you right now I'm struggling and that's with light and magnification. How Jean stitches on 56 count. I have no clue. But the 46 count is kind of kicking my butt. So I, um, oh, that's right. I ordered, I ordered fabric. I ordered 40 count. So yeah, I, I think I did, I was debating in my head, gal, it'd be nice to do it on like a 46 or 56 and have it be real small. But no, I decided to do 40 count. So anyway, I got to check in why my fabric's not here yet. Then I purchased from Teresa Vanette Kitten Stitcher some of her amazing linens. 
This one I love so much. This is 40 count Jill O Lantern instead of Jack O Lantern because Teresa's is clever like that. Look at that yummy, yummy orange color. This is beautiful. This is a giant. I don't even know how much this is. Oh, it's a yard. So a whole yard of this. So I will never run out of it. Then I purchased, this is a misfit because there's a hole in it. So it is um, discounted, but it's a half yard, 40 count. No, sorry. <laughs> misfit is the name of the linen. Half yard, 40 count. And it says under there flawed. Cause I'm like thinking it's a misfit cause it has a hole in it. And then when I saw flawed, I'm like, is that the name of the color? No, no, Teresa, no. Anyways, look at this amazing color. So here's the hole. No big deal. You work around it, right? It's such a pretty color. It's showing lighter than it is. It's actually pretty dark. A nice, just a nice how do I want to say warm brown? Okay, then we have 40 count my favorite jeans. This is a very gray blue, like blue jeans, like faded blue jeans. Love it. This is a yard as well. I can tell just by how much is here or how heavy it is. I love it. Thank you, Teresa. And then when I was in there, she gifted this to me, Mary Williams. This is a giant sampler, but she had it framed and it was sitting on the floor and I was just like staring at it. And I'm like, that is absolutely stunning. So she goes, well, here you go. The stitch count is 288 by 304. And I'm like, no, I'll pay for it. And she goes, Teresa, if I was in your booth, you would give me a pattern, wouldn't you? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so just be gracious and say thank you. So thank you, Teresa. This is so pretty. So pretty. Okay. That is part of my haul. Oh, I didn't finish Stitchy Kindness. God, I'm just all over the place. So, are you familiar with Lap and Loops? She's an upcoming fabric dyer. Her name is Megan, and her mom is Becky Nolan of Lucy Beam. And um, she was so kind and gave me two giant pieces of fabric. So this is 40 count stone fruit. Look at that modeling. Isn't it beautiful? Hold it up against this one. This one is 40 count jackalope. I love that name because sometimes I call my husband that. You jackalope. Look at these. Aren't they gorgeous? So pretty. Martha said no. Oh, wait. No, it was Maria said, one nation is in my whips. Oh, really? She said there's a Facebook group for one nation stitchers. Oh, cool. I'll have to check into that. I'm going to be so slow at it because I have the one, the design that Beth Twist and I collaborated on for the Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit. I'm stitching the big piece myself. So to keep up with that and to keep up with the mystery salad and Patreon, just those two alone are going to keep me fairly busy. So um, I'll be like a snail. Plus I have other whips I want to fix first. All right. So that's Stitchy Kindness. And I have one more haul. I mean, like I said, I have a lot of haul, but I'm not showing everything. I wanted to show you what I purchased from, I don't know how long, uh, Sue has had her Etsy shop. I didn't know she even had one and she sent me a link to it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going, I don't have many pins, you know, for my Biscor news and little pillows and stuff. So I went to her Etsy shop and purchased these B pins, which are fabulous. So Sue Proctor is the, the aunt of the Primrose Cottage Stitcher girls and the sister of their mother. And she is one of my model stitchers. So who knew she was making these super adorable pins and I'm so happy that she told me. <laughs> so here is her information of her Etsy shop.
Etsy.com slash shop slash handmade Sue crafts, plural. But I love these B ones and you will see these in my Biscor new um, for my April release or my May release. I'm sorry. All right. That is it for haul. I want to show you real quick the uh, Patreon pieces or the Patreon pieces, the Patreon Patreon designs for April. So when I, when I was sitting down to design, normally I will have a sketch or something to go off of. This time I didn't. This time I just sat down to like a blank canvas, you could call it. And I just started designing. I knew I wanted a four piece part that you could stitch all together or you could stitch all four separately as small pillows. And I wanted to do faith, hope, peace, and love. That's the jumping off point. The other jumping off point for me was that I wanted it to be in the colors of shades of blue and like taupes and creams. I love that color palette. I have no blue in my house, but when I redo my bedroom, I think I'm going to do it in blues, creams, and taupes because I love that. So the first one is called Faith, Hope, Peace, and Love. This is for tier two, three, and four. Stitch count is 150 by 150. But if you're not a fan of blue and taupe, you could change the blue out for shades of red. You could do just, you know, browns and taupes. I mean, you could do whatever the heck you want as far as the color goes. How many colors are there? There are three blues. There are three brown, well, more than three browns. There's like a, a cream, a light or darker cream, and then I guess you'd say three browns. But anyway, it was really fun to design this way. So I designed this one first and I, I wanted them all to have kind of the same theme. I wanted them to, to relate to, to one another. So I wanted them to have, you know, a house or a flower or mm -hmm. something that would appear in all of them. So as you can see, this little star is down here. You know, uh, do they all have a house? Three of them have a house. Um, you know, they ha I, love, I wanted to use a lot of birds. And they're all distinct enough to stand on their own, but yet they coordinate so well together. My first time charting a swan, and I love, I love this. Whoops, I think that's my favorite one. I love this little cartouche with the two birds in it. Anyway, it was really fun. So then when I started to do the second one, I'm like, okay, I'm going to make a band sampler of some sort. So I did pull some elements out of the first one to put in the second one so that again, they would tie together. I think all three of these stitched and hanging on the wall together would be so cute. Or this one stitched and then the other ones made into pillows. Love and charity begins at home. And what do I want to say about this one? Other than I love it. <laughs> this part right here would be an awesome drum. I mean, any of these sections. That's what I like about a band sampler is you can just take one of those strips and make a drum out of it or a small pillow. Do whatever you want. Using the same color palette, I use the same flosses throughout. That's how I do it every month so that they all coordinate. Then for the fourth one, I use the same colors, not, but I only use three colors in this one. And I did like an, is it an ombre? You would call that where it fades into the next color. And this one says faith. So you're probably wondering are, if I'm going to do another, like this stitch count is 100 by 67. So it'd be a cute size for a pillow. And then you might be wondering if I'm going to do hope, peace, and love. And yes, I am. I plan on doing something similar. It would be a different basket, different style flowers, but this part down here, um, it would say hope and I'd probably do something different here. You know, they'll be very matchy matchy, but not exact. So watch for that to come outside of Patreon. And then, yeah, let's leave it at that. <laughs> 
then each month I also offer a small ornament that can be purchased for five dollars if if they choose to do so the stitch count is 77 by 78 this is called there's no place like home and it's in a little round and it's a perfect companion piece to all the other ones it is pouring outside you guys it's supposed to rain all day today and tomorrow okay everything that's on the table has been talked about I think that is it. Other than, you know, my plans, it's really hard to make plans when you're about to go on vacation. I'm home two days. I'm gone for the next like five days. I'm home two weeks. I'm going to Florida for a week. But in the, in, you know, in the meantime, the one that I'm going um, to Traverse City with some stitchy friends, I plan on stitching a lot there. I really just want to veg with these girls, chit chat, eat bonbons. <laughs> and stitch the day away. Um, if the weather's nice, I mean, Traverse City is beautiful, but I've been there, I don't know how many times. I go at least once a year, maybe twice. So um, I know some of them want to go do a little sightseeing, but I'll probably hang back and just, I just want to relax and stitch. I really just want to stitch. I probably would take some punch needle. And if the poking, you know, the sound that it makes annoys everybody, then I probably won't do that very much. But I do want to work a little bit on that or work on a wool case, something. I'm going to be doing a lot of stitching or sewing. What else? Other plans. Um, I do want to keep my Saturdays to cleaning my studio. So I, it was funny because I wanted to do, I really wanted to do a market recap. And I thought, okay, so if I'm going to clean my studio on Saturdays, then I'll just record on Mondays. Monday came and went because Mondays are like the start of the week. I have a, always a ton of things to do. And I was working on that fabric line and I don't know. I just, I had to do it. I wanted to do it early enough in the day before, you know, Kyle and Kevin got to work. So it's nice and quiet down here. And with Easter, you know, we had Easter at our house. It was really nice. We had all the family over here and, um, you know, it's just been too busy. So I do plan on continuing to clean my studio. I have one more section and then this mid section I want to clean out. This is a spool cabinet that I purchased, oh God, last fall when I went to Barbara John's retreat in Port Huron. What I want to do is I'm thinking about moving that to my house. I was going to put there's a whole bunch of stuff behind it like an old sewing machine table that has like the pedal on it and i have quilts and things hooked not hooked rugs punched rugs and quilts stacked under there right now and then it, you can't really see it maybe i can move it a little bit so basically i'm talking about that right there so i'm either gonna take that up to the house or this cabinet and the cabinet would work better up there so that's probably what's going to happen to that. Um, but yeah, it feels so good. And then over here on my left side, I have an old computer that I'm going to move. And I'm going to put my Husqvarna Viking sewing machine up there. And I'm going to clean all of that out. All of the file cabinets and cabinets are, that are there, I'm going to clean those out. That's going to be my sewing area. So when I go to do an FFO. I don't have to get my sewing machine out, find a place to set it, get it plugged in, all that BS because it just makes it more difficult to, you know, FFO. Um, and then the big printer and the computer that goes with that to make our covers, to, you know, print our like 8x10, 11 by 14 prints that we sell in Etsy. My goal is to clean a spot out on the other side of the studio which is the workshop side of the studio that's where all the shipping all the inventory and everything is i want that over there with them because they do all the printing and cutting and packaging and shipping over there so they're back and forth back and forth back and forth all the time so i want to get that moved over there which would free that space up for me to be more organized with my my wool applique all of that oh i'm so excited <laughs> I cannot tell you how good it feels to get the studio clean and organized. So I have to continue working on that. I will just, you know, stitch when I can. I mean, I 
I wish I say I wish, but I love my business and I wouldn't want anything to happen to my business. So I don't I don't want to wish that away. But I know a lot of you, you know, you are able to stitch three and four hours a day. I wish I could do that. I just I can't when I'm running this business. So I just have to do it when I can. Um, those are my big things after my I'm working on a Halloween line for Riley Blake right now. And um, when I get back um, from this vacations, from these vacations, <laughs> my Christmas line is due June 15th. So I'll be really working on that hard to get that done. And once my Christmas line is done, then it's full on getting ready for Solder Village and, and ordering things for the retreats and things like that. So I have my work cut out for me in the next couple months here. All right. This is pretty much the end of my floss tube. I do have a personal thing I was going to talk about. So you can bow out or you can hang out with me and listen. Of course, like I said, I'm recording this live in my Patreon group and I want to chit chat with them. So you're welcome to stick around for all of that if you would like. But if not, I will see you when I see you. <laughs> It'll be at least three weeks because of the vacations and things I have coming up. I would like to get one done those that two week window I have before I go to Florida. I'm going to do a floss tube then and fill you in on Aruba and all of the, the stitchy girl funness and things that went on. So I want to just talk real quick about something that Kevin and I did. We went to a called it's called a functional doctor. And what they do is basically help you to heal your body just through what God gave us to heal our bodies through, you know, the way we eat, what we put in our mouth affects everything in our body. Right. So, um, that, and, um, you know, I, I don't feel like I have a lot of inflammation in my body. I don't have a lot of pain, but Kevin has a lot of pain in his knee and, you know, he, he deals with pain all the time. And so we're looking for solutions for him mostly, but I want to do it with him because not only want to support him and we need to be on the same page as far as our eating habits, but, um, you know, I want to be healthy too. So we went to this functional doctor and, you know, we saw her individually and then we went back a week later and talked to a nutritionist and the nutritionist put us on this elimination diet. So the elimination diet, you eliminate a lot of foods and things that cause inflammation in your body. So it's a quick way to get the inflammation out of your body. Inflammation causes pain and all kinds of health issues. The diet was for one month. And then after that month, you slowly add in the things that you took out of your diet. And you like, let's say for instance, we I add in eggs to my diet. I eat eggs for the next three days. And then I keep a diary and say, how do I feel after eat, bringing that back into my diet? And if nothing feels different, if you know, you don't feel inflammation, inflammation and stuff like that, then you're not, you don't have an adverse reaction to eggs. So then you add something back in else into your diet. So the things we had to eliminate was alcohol, eggs, all dairy products and beef. So no cheese, milk, yogurt, cottage cheese, no cheese. That was a hard one. <laughs> I really like cheese. <laughs> um, okay. So no beef, um, no coffee, basically whole foods. We were eating a lot of fruits, vegetables, chicken, fish, not a lot of, no bread, not a lot of starchy, um, type like potatoes and things. Um, after the first couple weeks we did, we were able to add in some potatoes, but a lot of roasted vegetables. And I'm telling, oh, so with this nutrition or with this diet plan, we got a cookbook that they designed and put together. And I'm telling you what, I love this cookbook. I'm a big fan. Give me one sec. I keep licking my lips because they're dry and I'm like, that's so annoying. I know you guys don't want to see it. <laughs> so, um, where was I? 
Oh yeah, the cook, the recipes in this cookbook are fantastic. Now, it took us three hours to grocery shop the first, <laughs> the first Sunday before we started the diet. We had started it on a Monday because we didn't know where to find half of the stuff that was in there. There was a lot of odd things I had never heard of, but you know, you you use a little bit of it, you know, for various recipes. So once you have it, you'll have it for a long time. And and these are things like you know, oils in like tapioca flour, uh, coconut aminos, things like that, that I'm like, what is this? But once you have it, you have it for a long time. Out of now over a month, we, we ended the diet last Sunday. The, um, the recipes are fantastic. Like we had sriracha chicken yesterday. It was so good. I mean, I literally took my finger and was <laughs> doing one of those. <laughs> it was so delicious. And <clears throat> now that was not, so in this, in this cookbook that they give us, it has smoothies, crock pot recipes, um, casserole recipes, um, sauces. We made our, we make our own barbecue sauce now and it's fam, I would say fan, fabulous and fantastic. Fantastic. I was going to say it weird, but by accident, <laughs> I was going to say, I don't even know. It was delicious anyway. So that now, you know, because when you buy things at the store, if you read the ingredients, that is so important to read the ingredients. There's always so much garbage in most of the things we eat. If you buy boxed things in. So anyway, we're, you know, this, these recipes are, we can make our own hummus, guacamole, all these fan, we can make our own crackers. And so basically just dialing our diet down to the most basic things that we're meant to eat. So Kevin has been, I thought it was going to be very difficult for him because I've done diets. I'm a woman. I've done diets all through my life off and on, right? Uh, every time I do a diet and I quit doing the diet, the weight comes back every single time. So I'm like, I just want to make a life change that... It's just, this is how we eat, you know, and I don't have a problem with it because it's delicious. And now that we, now that we are adding things back into our diet and finding out what is causing inflammation and that kind of thing, um, I'll be able to eat cheese again. I'm sure of it. Cause I wasn't having an, an issue really anyways. I wasn't having pain. Um, but you know, we eat, I like goat cheese, crumbled up goat cheese for my salad. Um, goat cheese is more, it's easier to digest than, uh, cheese from a cow. So there's just, I'm learning a ton of things and I love it. I love feeling good. I had given up drinking, like, you know, having a couple of beers or something like that. I gave that up for Lent anyway. So I was already doing that when I started this diet. So that was not an issue for me, uh, giving up bread. I really can't tell you that anything that I craved anything, we don't eat a lot of sugar. So that was not a big deal. We did celebrate Kyle's birthday on Easter. His birthday was on the 30th. So on the 31st for Easter, I did, we did cheat on the diet. I have to say it's Easter. I didn't eat ham. I ate the turkey. We never do turkey for Easter, but we did this year for Kevin and I, you know, I had a tiny thing of stuffing and I didn't even do any mashed potatoes. I mean, I cooked them for everybody else, but I didn't eat any, which I love mashed potatoes, but I was kind of figuring out what I really wanted and not, you know, having everything. So I had, I had turkey, I had stuffing. I put a little bit of gravy on the turkey. Brie made a wonderful salad. It was delicious. And then Kyle's birthday. So I did have a small, tiny piece of ice cream cake because it's my son's birthday. <laughs> but I didn't gain weight from that. I, I've been weighing myself every morning and I am slowly, very slowly losing weight, which is fine. I think the slower you lose weight, the more like it will stick type of thing. When I did keto, I dropped 30 pounds in six weeks. I've done keto twice. Both times in six weeks, I dropped 30 pounds. It was fabulous. But I can't, you can't be on a keto diet the rest of your life. I mean, you'd have heart failure, I swear, because I ate tons of bacon. It was, it's, keto is a high fat, mid protein, like almost no carbs, like, but it's very high fat. And that's what gives you into this 
state of key, where your body's producing ketones, blah, blah, blah. So that works great. Like if you want to do that because you're going to be in a wedding and you want to lose some weight or something like that, but it's not sustainable. And once I got off, the weight came back and my hair fell out. Yeah. Like after being on the diet for six weeks, clumps and clumps of hair. So the first time I did it, I lost a ton of hair. The second time I did it, I wasn't taking biotin and I wasn't taking a lot of vitamins. So I thought, well, I'll, you know, I started taking biotin way before I started the keto diet, thinking that would keep my hair in place. And it didn't. Um, I lost a ton of hair again. So I'm like, I just can't do keto again. My hair is, I probably have maybe two thirds or a half of the hair I used to have. I mean, I used to have a thick ponytail and my hair is very thin now. The only thing I like about it is that when I blow dry, it dries fast. But other than that, I just, I can't do anything, can't afford to lose more hair. So <clears throat> anyways, plus what I'm doing now is more sustainable. Like I said, we love this recipe book. We have been doing nothing but cooking out of it. A lot of ground turkey instead of ground beef, which they have you put stuff in the ground turkey and you cook it like you would cook a hamburger. And then we don't, you know, eat the bun. We just eat that. I mean, it's delicious. I'm not saying I'm never going to eat bread again. I'm not, you know, I, the thing is like, we're going on this vacation and there's going to be tons of fish and there's going to be, it's going to be one of the easier vacations, I think, to stick to eating good because I, a lot of fresh vegetables, fresh fruit and fish is my go-to for this trip to Aruba. Um, but one of the things that all of that to say <laughs> that the nutritionist said you can't have coffee. Now, Kevin and I, because of his, his, um, tremors, we don't, we, we switched to decaf coffee a long time ago. And we, we like that. I like sitting down with a cup of coffee in the morning, but we couldn't do it for that month. So the nutritionist said, well, I have this tea. She gave us these two tea bags. So I want you guys to try this and see if you like it. This is something that you can do. It's caffeine free. And it's a prebiotic, it's acid-free, caffeine-free, gluten-free. It is fantastic. We are in love with this tea. It's called Ticino. Ticino. Dandelion coconut is kind of the go-to that we get. It's So it doesn't taste like coffee, not necessarily. Like, look how dark the roast is, though. You, the, it's not like your tea that's real thin. It's got a lot of flavor. This one's my favorite, dandelion caramel nut. That's my favorite. Um, so since we're not drinking coffee, we're drinking tea now. And I love this caffeine free so I can have this any, excuse me, anytime during the day. I mean, coffee, yeah, that's caffeine free too. But I think even the caffeine free coffee, I think they said has a little bit of it in there. And I don't want anything to mess with my sleep. That's one thing that, being on this elimination diet, I feel like I have more energy. I sleep better. I just overall feel good, you know, and, and when you eat healthy, you just automatically feel good about that. So I wanted to bring this tea up to you because I know a lot of people are tea drinkers and you should try this. It's, it's not the cheapest thing in the world, but the coffee we were buying was organic and it was expensive too. So anyways, just wanted to bring that up. That was why I, <laughs> all of that to say, um, take care of yourself, basically be healthy. Now, if you're interested in this cookbook, they do sell it. I believe I'll call them and see if they can, if you can buy it. I'm pretty sure because I know when we went there, I was waiting for Kevin because he was in talking to the the doctor first. And so I was in the waiting room and I, they had their cookbook sitting there and I was reading through it. And I'm like, I want this cookbook. And then I talked to her, the doctor about it. And she said, well, when you do the elimination diet, you automatically get a cookbook. I'm like, sweet. So they do sell it. I want to say it's $50, but I'm not sure. It is well worth it. Like mm -hmm. I said, uh, Kevin, he likes the smoothies in the morning. Um, we, I didn't, we, we didn't follow it to a T because you're supposed to eat breakfast. I'm not a breakfast person. I don't eat until noon or one o'clock. Like right now, I'm just now starting to get hungry. 
um, I find if I eat breakfast, I'm hungry all day long and I just tend to munch throughout the day and I don't want to do that. So I've been eating, you know, no breakfast and, and not, not eating until noon. I've been doing that for a couple of years now. But anyway, so now I'm going to look at all your comments and let's see if we can chat, guys. Vicki has already finished the small faith. I am stitching all four on the same piece of linen. Very cool. Norma Scott, yesterday was beautiful here in Michigan. Today, rainy here too. Yeah, it's just supposed to rain all day, which is a bummer because we have the grandkids and we can't play outside. Um, <laughs> Norma said, LOL, oh, the no coffee part. That would be a big no for me. I'm trying to eat healthy and a lot of that. Wait. And I can give up a lot, but not coffee. But I don't put sugar or that fake coffee cream. I know a lot of people, I mean, can't give up that coffee. And I don't blame you. I, But, you know, now that I have the substitute, I basically just like a warm beverage. And, and I'm telling you what, before, because she gave us those tea bags and we didn't try them right away. And all we could drink was water. Water, 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 water. I was so sick of drinking water. So um, that's why we kind of like, let's try this tea. And we, we really like it. Let's see. I don't shop the inside of the grocery store. Prepackaged food is nasty. Yeah, I've heard that too. Stay on the perimeter of the store. That's where you're going to get your meat, your fresh vegetables, your fruit, you know, um, your cheeses and things. Yeah. We're the same. I mean, you have to go in there to get like this tapioca flour. And that was something funny too, is like they had tapioca flour, like three different kinds of flour. And I'm like, well, why can't we just use tapioca flour? That's what we use now to thicken everything because it works. And um, anyways, the try and basically the other thing they're trying to get you away from is eating wheat and grains. Um, a lot of nuts. We ate a lot of nuts. You can eat, um, I don't know. There's, and, and I've, so th another reason I wanted to do this diet is because I'm on a quest to get my cholesterol down. In January, I get all of my, you know, yearly things done and my cholesterol was high, uh, kind of alarmingly high. And she wanted to put me on cholesterol medicine. And I said, no, give me a chance to get it down. And so I, when I get back from um, these two vacations, like the first last of April, I plan on going to the doctor and having more lab work done to see if it's went down. Oh, and I also started working out. <clears throat> I was working out on my elliptical machine, but now I've added weight training in there because I used to lift weights all the time and I haven't done it for probably four years. And she said, the, the doctor said, you know, as you grow older, you need strong bones and resistance training is the best way to keep your bones nice and strong. The other thing she told me, I wasn't eating enough protein because I was eating a salad at lunch. And a lot of times I would just have some cheese in there and maybe some pecans, but I wouldn't have chicken or anything. And she said, you need more protein. If you're just eating protein once a day, she said, that's not enough. So, you know, she rectified my, my uh, eating habits too. Terry said, when eating whole foods, think about anything that comes from a plant or has a mama. Right? I recently purchased unpasteurized cheese. You might want to ask her about that. That was from Daisy. Thank you. Maria said, day job duties call. I have to hop off, but very interesting to hear more about this elimination diet. What flavors... Do you drink? Oh, Frankie said she loves that tea. Yeah, they don't carry it at our Kroger, but, and you can buy it right from their website, but it takes a little bit to get it. And we wanted some to, to, to take to Aruba. So they do sell it on Amazon. And if you have Amazon Prime, you get it in a couple of days. So I had to do that. I prefer to order it right from the company. to. So, But, but the thing is, when you go to Amazon, it's, it's, that company, they have a store, Amazon store. So you're still buying it directly from them. 
what else? Any other questions? Why won't it let me scroll back on my... It's not letting me scroll back on my um, comments. Oh, here we go. Now it's working. Anything else? Oh, Doreen. Privies and Prunes. Needle Crafts. Name of the bag maker shop again. So are you talking about the totes? Whoa. If you're talking about these totes, this is Bella Rose Needle Arts or Needle Works. Hold on. Bella Rose Needleworks. Now, I don't know that she has these in her shop, but you might be able to reach out to her through her Etsy shop and ask her um, if you could, you know, commission her to make one. Now, if you're talking about... What did I do with the other project bag? Oh, if you're talking about this project bag... This is, I believe this is a one-off that she made this for me. I don't believe she has an Etsy shop. She, let me just read real, real quick what she said. She said she's a beginner bag maker. Uh... Yeah, she, I don't believe she sells these, so. What do we have here? Oh, Patty Wyan was on here. Because she said, hate to go, but work and duty calls. We'll watch the replay. All right, this is, this thing is not scrolling very well. I'm using my iPad, and I don't use my iPad a whole lot. Colleen is here. Hello, Colleen. Frankie, the maca chocolate or hazelnut flavors are really good. Here's the other thing. Yes, they they have. So this is the dandelion. The dandelion, like this says dandelion coconut, and then this one says dandelion car caramel nut. So those are more like a kind of like a detox herbal tea let me see what it says a swirl of sweet and creamy caramel against roasted dandelion and chicory roots enhanced by dates figs and almonds i'm telling you it's delicious but then they have mushroom teas they have all kinds of different teas Let's see. Stitching sacred as we chat. Thanks, Teresa, for this wonderful design. You are so welcome. I'm so glad that was a hit. Our, our number one seller at market was Serenity. And then Needleworkers Oath was really close with that, you know, partly because it's an exclusive. And shops were like, oh, <laughs> they love an exclusive, you know. And I don't, they, they deserve that because they, you know, made the trip to Nashville to um, attend the show. So um, I have no problem doing exclusives for them. But like I said, I will be adding all of that to my Etsy shop probably tomorrow because it's already 10 after 12 and we have to pick up Easton in a couple hours. All right, Dina said, I am going to look into this. I love tea. Yes, would be interested in the cookbook. All right, cool. Well, I will put that cookbook um, like a phone number or something where you can purchase it. Maybe they have it on their website. I don't know. But I will get that information for you and post it in the description box below. But I think that's it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go so I can um, hopefully get this downloaded and do a little bit of editing so that I can upload it to my FlossTube channel. Thank you for watching. I so appreciate you all being here live with me in Patreon. Have a great stitchy few weeks. And don't forget, create every day. Bye.